What is holding back the sentiment from Europe? And where does Asia-Pacific stand in the economic development stage? We address these questions in the latest release of the Dukoskopi Bank Sentiment Index. Today on the line we have not one, but two professors who took part in April's poll. Professor Amit Sinha from Bradley University in the USA and Professor Javier Cuartas Morato from Universidad Pompeo Fabra in Spain and who share with us their opinion on the six-month and three-year prospects. Thank you both for joining me. To start off, let's see how the mood indicator changed in comparison to the previous month. The sentiment for Europe appears to be the most volatile for two consecutive months. However, this time around, the prospects are considerably higher than the previous data. The six-month outlook rose by 0.13 to 0.41 and the three-year prospect by 0.12 to 0.58, signifying moderate growth in the long run. Nonetheless, despite the boost, short-term prospects are still negative. Moreover, since the records began, the six-month outlook for Europe has never reached a figure higher than 0.41. Professor Sinha, do you think perhaps the periphery is responsible for the continuous gloomy outlook in the European region? I would definitely say that, uh, that the periphery may be responsible for it. Because if you look at the forecast, uh, the European Union is probably is supposed to slow down, but if you look at some of the countries, uh, the slowdown in, say, in France is not going to be as much. Uh, you, Germany is supposed to grow, although only fractionally, but if you look at the slowdown in, say, Cyprus, it's close to 9%. Greece forecasted to slow down around 4% in 2013. So definitely the periphery is responsible for this. Professor Quadras, do you share the same view? I wouldn't say that the periphery is responsible for that. I think that this is a European problem, and sooner or later we'll have to find a European solution for this. So, I mean, I, I think that the, basically the, the problem in Europe is not so much an economic problem, but a political problem. So uh, we need a new uh, governance system in Europe. We need a new banking union, a new fiscal union, and and this we have not reached that point yet moving on we have previously discussed where europe and north america stand in the business cycle so now let's have a look at asia pacific and its economic development stages 29 experts out of 30 claim that asia pacific is in an expansion phase and is closer to the peak compared to the european and north american economies Professor Quadras, how objective do you think the assessment of the Asian Pacific region is, taking into account that there are different countries in the area with diverse economies? Yeah, well, I, I think that this this impression is probably uh, driven by by the consideration of uh, China uh, as the major player in the area. So is 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 probably not to generalize the situation as probably China has uh, uh, shown some some symptoms of overheating and maybe people are worried about that other countries um, are in a very different situation but probably uh, China is such a big player in the region that um, it conditions the the general view on the on the on the region for many observers probably. Professor Sinha, and what is your opinion on the matter? The peak for the Asia Pacific may be further uh, further away, uh, although relatively speaking to the other two uh, economies that the, you conducted the surveys on Europe and North America. Uh, relatively speaking, the Asia Pacific is closer to the peak phase. Even if you also look at the Asian, uh, the Asian Five, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam, they are also uh, forecasts to grow, although the growth may not be uniform. And these are diverse countries and you know diverse economies, so they they would continue to expand. So we, we have to make be a little bit careful in terms of. Um, coming to the conclusion that they are close to the peak. Finally, when we observe the three-year economic sentiment for all of the regions during the course of five months, it appears that while the prospects in January plummeted, both for Europe and Asia-Pacific, 
North America's outlook continued to be stable. Professor Sinha, how could you explain this resilience of the region? That probably could be explained because the U.S. government did something that, uh, you know, there was some anxiety about. They came together to uh, resolve the tax issue. They come, came together to uh, talk about the debt, uh, debt ceiling or at least postpone that uh, a little bit further on. Uh, they were able to... The, the sequester, they were able to move that a few months. Uh, so, that, you know, that, that uh, did bring about a lot of, uh, you know, positive feelings. Professor Quadras, and what reasons do you see behind it? On one side, the United States is a much richer country than, than the region of Asia-Pacific, so this gives some resilience to the, to the economy. And on the other side, comparing to Europe, the economic policy frame there is much more stable uh, than what we have now in Europe that is is evolving every day in in a different <laughs> in a different direction maybe. Professor Sinha and Professor Quadras, it was great having you both share your view. For everyone else, for more information on the Dukoscopy Bank Sentiment Index, we encourage you to visit Dukoscopy.com and click on Sentiment Index under the Market Research section. Until next time, goodbye.